We're really building a movement. Mm -hmm. uh, we're building a movement of Jewish people who love Yeshua, who uh, call him, you know, our King and Messiah, and uh, are still a part of the Jewish experience and the Jewish people. Um, so as opposed to outside into the Jewish community, mm -hmm. we were, you know, there's Reformed Judaism and Conservative and Orthodox, and we're, we're Messianic Judaism, and we're the only ones in the Jewish community that embrace Yeshua as the Messiah. And we have, we feel that we need to share that message with our Jewish people. We're building a, a, a theological seminary, a, you know, youth camp, a rabbinical council, a congregations, a outreach posts like Ruach House. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of these different things that, that we do is, mm -hmm. is all uh, working towards uh, what we like to call, what, what the Apostle Paul calls the fullness of Israel in Romans 11. Um, you know, that one day, you know, the Jewish people uh, we'll, we'll, we'll bend our knee and say, you know, Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When that happens, you know, the, the Apostle Paul says that that's when Yeshua returns. You know, that's, he says, yeah. that, you know, if blessing can come to the nations through a hardening of heart of the Jewish people toward their Messiah, how much more so will their fullness bring, but, you know, the resurrection from the dead. So, you know, we're not predicting the end times, but we do feel that that the Lord is doing something important right now, and He is beginning this process of bringing the Jewish people home. And so, our calling and our mission is to to be a light for Messiah within the heart of the Jewish people. You know, building a Judaism with Yeshua at the heart. It's this is a long journey, a long road that we're working towards, but we're we're seeing significant. Uh, fruit, you know, we're seeing key leaders in the Jewish community, both in the academic world and in the, um, you know, in the different different kinds of different Jewish movements, um, starting to yeah. embrace Messianic Judaism as a part of the Jewish world. And you know, it, it used to be, well, you can't be Jewish if you believe in Jesus, and now it's well, you know, the Jewish world is very diverse, and uh, there's no reason why, you know you guys aren't Jews, you know, which for us is a step, you know, because it, it, uh, we're at the table at that point. What were the challenges you were facing with the pandemic? When the pandemic first came out, we realized that this could be a significant amount of time away from, yeah. away from being together in person. Our first response was, this isn't going to let us, we're not going to let this uh, set us back. We're going mm -hmm. to, you know, pivot everything. We've been having Zoom services. We use Zoom because we want to be able to interact with each other. So in our services, we have a place where everyone unmutes and says hi to each other. And um, mm -hmm. we have different people reading from different homes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, music groups from different homes that are playing. We really changed everything. We changed youth group. We changed the men's group, the women's group. Um, everything went over Zoom. So we've got this new virtual community that's developing out of this <laughs> yeah we know? have a lot of people who don't want it to go back to being you know, know in person because they're like oh we love that we can join you from arizona or um oregon i mean we have people from all over the country yeah that join in like every week we found with our um we have you know small group bible studies that meet um during the week we have a couple of them that are pretty steadily going on every week and actually we have you know, two or three. And again, more people, because they're not in person where people have to drive to get there, more people have been, you know, attending and joining in to our Bible study. First ever virtual Passover Seder that we yeah. held from our kitchen with the kids <laughs> running around, you know? <laughs> yes, that was, that was unbelievable. That was great. We did our first ever Shavuot. Our, our congregation is a part of a wider network of congregations throughout the country. And so we actually had a nationwide um, Shavuot event where anyone was invited from, you know, part of our union is what we call it, the Union of Messianic Jewish Congregations. And so there was hundreds of people all signed on and all doing it together. So we had different people teaching every hour. And for Shavuot, you're supposed to stay up and study all night long. So every hour from 8 o'clock until 6 o'clock in the morning, there was someone you know, teaching and people studying the Torah together. And then, you know, as the summer progressed, we uh, had our 
youth camp, Camp Orlador, and we weren't able to meet in person. And so we decided to give a virtual camp a go. And, mm -hmm. you know, we were pretty skeptical. I should say I was skeptical at first. How is this going to work? You know, campfires. But, you know, <laughs> <Zoom fire. laughs> we did it. We did My Zoom fires. <laughs> A success. success. Smashing success. It really was. The message for camp this year was the joy of the Lord is our strength. This is the first time we've ever done this. We're combining with two other Messianic Jewish synagogues for yeah. all of our High Holy Day services. We're working with these other synagogues and so we're all partnering together over Zoom and it's been really fun. I would say, so what is the best part of being a, a Messianic Jewish rabbi? There are so many things that I love about being a Messianic Jewish rabbi. It could just go on and on from, you know, blowing the shofar, um, yeah. you know, which we've been practicing here for Rosh Hashanah. I can give you a couple blasts on the recording here. Leading, leading authentically Jewish services for our people and Jewish people who don't yet know the Messiah is just right at the center of my heart and being able to worship in a Jewish way and helping uh, our, our Messianic Jewish community to enter into worship and to grow in the life of Messiah together. I love uh, all of the pastoral elements of being a rabbi and counseling and working with people. And I just started working with a, a new um, young uh, uh, Jewish couple, Messianic Jewish couple uh, who are getting married and, um, in March. And so I'm doing you know, their premarital work with them. And uh, that's very unique to be able to, to learn together as a young married couple with Messiah and Jewish life separate, you know, inseparably together uh, is, is really very cool. Um, and then that dovetails into what we do with the young adults. One of my passions is working with teens and uh, the next generation and 20s and 30s. And, um, you know, at our youth camp, Camp Rolador, every year we see, uh, we see Jewish people come to faith in the Messiah, Jewish young adults, yeah. and, and give their life to him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we see, we see second, third, sometimes even fourth generation Messianic Jews and are able to encourage them and uh, help them on their walk and help them to own their faith. And that, I would say that's one of my, one of my greatest joys. Immersing people in the name of Messiah <laughs> is just a joy to me. <laughs> you know, you know, our relationship with you guys with the church and it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we see ourselves as, you know, brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles in the Messiah. We need to just partner together and do this work. And, you know, that's why uh, what, what you, you know, our relationship here that's been a what, 20 year relationship with Rabbi Rich and us and- 30 like, years. 30 years, you know. <laughs> I mean, I went to school with Dave Hughes, so they, they're like almost- Yeah, that's yeah right. they're all no. <laughs> And you guys, I mean, New Hope, you, Norm, and um, Dave, and Wendy, you know, like, um, when we first started out, you know, back in mm -hmm. 2008, I think it was, um, before we had any, any of the babies or anything, mm -hmm. um, you know, you guys were such an encouragement to us. Yeah. And I think that uh, New Hope was the first church that we went out to, to play some music and speak at with yeah. Rabbi Rich and to share. Yeah. Uh, shared my story of coming to faith in Yeshua on the Appalachian Trail and how we mm -hmm. met hitchhiking and mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but your support and encouragement and just you know just kind of believing in us yeah, has yeah. All made all the difference and so no, you had a great message and it, <laughs> like, it was just a joy you know it's great to have a relationship you know a big thank you to yeah. all to, to you thank Norman you and New Hope and you know right. and all of you for your support to to make you know this important ministry happen. How can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. Pray for us to come into contact and to be able to reach out to more Jewish people that don't yet know the Messiah. A lot of the people that do come to come into our midst, and that we can then, you know, move help help them toward a relationship with Yeshua, are first directed by our Christian brothers and sisters yeah. who they come into contact with, and mm -hmm. and they can say. Hey, you heard of this Messianic Jewish synagogue and they say never heard of that but it sounds kind of cool let me go check it out or whatever um, and and so that's a that's a wonderful thing um, keep our youth camp in prayer um, we're actually uh, pivoting here a bit more and because virtual camp was so successful it's opened the doors for us to do a virtual winter retreat 
Um, and of course, we're hoping to do in-person camp next summer, mm -hmm. but this can be an ongoing thing even after this pandemic where we can have a, uh, a virtual kinds of retreats for these young adults that live around the country that don't have any kind of Messina Jewish community like we have here. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, uh, you know, with Ruach House, City Ruach and Ruach House, um, and our young adult outreach, keep that in prayer as mm -hmm. we go through this year. The, um, I think that COVID is, has affected that group the most and that we can rebu rebuild and reestablish and that, you know, 2021 would be, mm -hmm. would be a, uh, a new year with some new people and some new outreach and new contacts and, and some growth. That's great. Hey, would you guys like a shofar blast since I've got it out here? Sure.